In the last episode, I picked up the tank I've been waiting over four months for. Drilled holes in it, even though I've only had it in my possession for less than an hour. Redid the top of the cabinet, and prepped the glass overflow for installation. In this episode, I will mount the glass overflow, start on the plumbing, and begin painting the tank. This has dried. Don't worry, you won't even see that. I just made that when I was test fitting it. It's actually not even really dry, but it's gonna clear it real quick. Just a light layer of clear. And then flip it over. And this panel, once it has dried, should be done. So now I just need to screw this into place, get the tank back up, and finish the overflow. And now with all of our measurements in place, this is exactly nine and a half where the overflow meets. And that is exactly nine and a half where that piece of glass meets the rim of the tank. And that is a perfect triangle. So now what I have to do is tape the aquarium of where I don't want the caulk like I did with the sump. And then I think this thing's ready to be caulked into place. So now I'm just gonna let that dry for a few hours and then hit it from the backside. It's amazing how fast the temperature actually dropped today. Like when I woke up, it was 36 or so. Now it's like 52 degrees. Most of the snow is melted. Eh, it's wild. And we're in February. Anyway, so the front is tacky. So now is a good time to start caulking the back seams. So that was a pain in the ass. Um, I couldn't get the caulk gun in that corner. I literally just had to put like a gunk on my finger and get in there. But I've got the caulk everywhere where it needs to be and then some. So when this does dry, I'm just gonna take a razor blade and sharpen up those edges so that caulk isn't down there and that caulk isn't over there. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. I got the caulk where it needs to go, and that's the most important part. So, put some tension on this, and I'm gonna let this dry, and then come back in here with a razor blade and uh, clean it all up. So it's been about two hours, and it looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna let that dry for probably a whole day, come back out here tomorrow afternoon, and uh, the next thing I'm working on is uh, the plumbing. I'm going to start the plumbing process. I don't know how you arrange your plumbing, but what I do is I like to use the blue tape and just kind of form what you want the plumbing to look like before you actually, you know, glue it all together. I'm going to start this. And one problem that, it's not really a problem, but what I've encountered is this is my light pole. So this is going to come to about here. So I can't just drill down because I don't want my light pole hitting the plumbing. That's why I came up with this arrangement. So that will screw on like that. And then this will just go straight down. So as you can see, I need to drill a hole somewhere around here. So that when that is all the way screwed in, it'll be closer to the aquarium like that. So that'll go straight down inside of the cabinet through the cabinet and down into the sump and i'm working on the exit plumbing 
And then with the 90 installed, it'll be right there. So as you can see, it hangs down this low. And then what it'll do is it'll come out of a pipe, just go straight into the sump. Let's get a better look at that though. All right, so this is bulletproof. This thing is not going anywhere. So just remove the support brace. And that is now a part of the tank. So the next thing I'll do is I'll get a razor blade and clean up these areas. The back area doesn't actually even matter. It's just aesthetics, but I'll still get a razor blade in there as much as possible to remove all the caulk from the side of the glass and um, go from there. So the next thing I'm working on, as you can see, is the plumbing. I'm doing the overflow plumbing. And right now, I'm just getting the measurements I need and I'm gonna start cutting them out and I'm gonna start installing them. And here's a little tip. It's tip time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you're done cutting plumbing, uh, make sure you take some sandpaper and go over the edges because sometimes when you cut with a saw or anything else for that matter, it'll leave little indentations here and one year putting the plumbing into place for an example I'll use this uh, there's a little chip right here it's hard to see but when you insert that it'll actually grind into the other piece and you don't want that to happen you want a very very tight seal especially when with aquarium plumbing so the next piece I'm adding to the overflow is a union now, there's a lot of debate on whether to use unions or not. I, I, I like them. I use them because sometimes um, pipes, get, they get clogged up. And you want to be able to remove your pipes without taking off your overflow. So, I use them. So, here's another little tip. So, my particular overflow is a screw-on. As you can probably see here, this piece is actually screwed onto the bottom of the overflow. So I don't really need a union, but I still like to use them. And also I have two of them. So I'm gonna be installing this union like this. Now, here's how a union works. It's basically comprised of three different parts. And this is like a, like a clamp that will clamp onto this side. Now, once this is installed to a pipe, you can't get it off of that pipe unless you slide it you know, all the way down. So what I do is I take this smaller part and connect it there. So that way I don't need to unscrew this. This whole piece will come out through the overflow. So always use this, the part with the gasket closest to the part that you want to remove from the tank. I hope that makes sense, but this is typically what I do. And so the next thing I have to do is cement these three pieces in a place like that. And there's a lot of different cements on the market. What I typically use is this, it's like Odie or Adi, however you say it. Uh, I like the brand, so I bought two of them. Uh, they're both pretty much the same. One is uh, up to four inch pressure schedule 40 and up to two inch pressure schedule 80. And this says it does PVC, ABS, and CPVC. I've never worked with CPVC before, only uh, PVC and ABS. But for today, I'm going to use the Odie regular clear PVC cement. That's what it looks like. Actually, I take that back. I can't even get the lid off this thing. So I'm going to be using this. Push it in and hold it because sometimes these things love to pop out. So take your piece and push it in and hold it. 
and then make sure to clean any piece before the stuff really starts to set in because once it's once it's set that's it so i just like to clean it out a little bit any rag will do and once you're satisfied with that piece just continue moving forward just press and hold and don't forget to wipe off the excess like so so now I have to connect these two pieces. So a very small piece has to go inside of here to connect this piece to this piece. The easiest way to get to those dimensions are actually using measuring tape. And there is a line in there. Hopefully you can see that. So stick your measuring tape inside and measure. And this is just about one inch. Now they're all not the same because if you look at this piece, this piece is actually over an inch by an eighth of an inch. So take your inch and an eighth and your little bit less than an inch and write those down. And then now what we're going to do is cut that piece out of this. Now it's going to be a small piece. And then just repeat the same process by sanding it. And that's your piece that'll go in between to connect those two pieces. So as far as the overflow bulkhead goes, um, once it's screwed into place, it's, it's fine and it won't leak or anything. But what I want is I want this piece to be able to be removed. So what I do is just go ahead and slip this right in without caulking that part and then caulk this part on. So now that all of our pieces on the overflow are cemented into place and have dried, let's go ahead and install everything. And everything looks pretty good. So the only thing I'm gonna do right now is take off this union and glue this to it. And once it has dried, I will install it back. There we go. Pretty easy, huh? This part's not going to be. There are so many different measurements I have to take. So basically at the back of the tank, there needs to be a pipe to come down here. And that hole needs to be perfectly on that line. And so fast forward a little bit. So I got all the plumbing in place and glued in. So. What I'm doing now is I just cut this piece of temporary uh, PVC to get an adjustment. So now if I just slip this in, and I'm not gonna use this, this is just temporary. And then when I move this down, and make sure that this is level, now I know where I need to drill my hole. <laughs> So with a ton of measuring, and I mean a ton of measuring, this is finally done. So the backside comes through the bulkhead, comes through here, down, hits this union, comes through the tank, and then on the other side, this is the pipe. For a little bit of a better view, that's where it comes through. So now all I have to do is just measure out where I want the pipe to come down and into the second compartment of the sump for the return pump. I just got these balls yesterday and she's already completely destroyed one Look at this thing. <laughs> this is this is what she wants. And what I'm doing right now is just getting the bottom measurement. So that looks like 17. 
And now that the long piece of the return pump is in place, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm using these inch. The pipe's three quarter, but I'm using inch clamps. And I'll go with something like that, and then attach to that two by four. Since I'm using a one inch clamp, there's a little bit of a space in between. And what I need to do is just cut a piece of wood, put it here, and then screw the clamp down to it. And one of the reasons why I got one inch instead of three quarter is it's bigger around the pipe. So I'm gonna wrap rubber around the pipe. What that's gonna do, help with, is cause less noise and vibrations. And what I'm doing now is just getting all of these ready for paint. Start with the primer first. So I'm going to be painting the back glass white. And I'm going to be using two different paints. Uh, I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Cover. And I'm going to be using the same paint I use for the interior of the cabinet, which is Glidden Semi-Gloss White. And there's a reason for that, and I'll show you why. I'm going to use this piece of glass as an example. So the first thing I'm going to do is separate this piece of glass down the middle, like so. And then I'll paint one side with the spray paint, and I'll paint the other side with the Glidden Semi-Gloss paint. <laughs> well, whatever this is, uh, actually fell down. It's not going to ruin what I was going to show you guys anyway, so. And here's the difference between the spray paint and the latex home paint. So with the spray paint, it's really hard to get off the glass. And when it does come off, it just chips and chips and chips. So if you paint the back of your glass with spray paint, and if you ever wanted to change the color or, you know, redo it, that's what you're gonna be facing. Or with the latex house paint, this is only one layer. And as you can see, it comes off in sheets. And most of the time you can just peel it right off. So as you can see, it comes off a lot easier than the spray paint. So like I said, if you wanted to change color or you know you, you get a scratch in it, it's really easy to repair. It just comes off in sheets and then you can repaint. And also the really good thing about it is the more layers you put on, the latex home paint is going to be a lot easier because the more layers you put on, the easier the sheets will actually pull off because you're making a thicker layer. I'm just going to give him one more decent coat and then these will be done. So as you can see these are looking pretty good so I just flip them over and start coating this side. In the next episode I will finish the plumbing, finish the tank painting, and make an overflow cover. I really do hope you are enjoying the videos and if you are Please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to receive notifications on new videos. It's completely free and a great way to support the channel.